Thank you, Jesus. Can we stand as we start the Sunday morning service? Amen. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Everybody, we are um, still taking donations for um, clothing. Um, for that, the little bit they don't want to share for the, uh, those, those that are in need. Amen. So just uh, you can bring them to the church and we'll kind of store it, um, get the, uh, the truck outside until that is them. And then we'll have um, Woody help sort the clothes, get them ready, and all that kind of good stuff. That'll be later on this month. But please bring them all what you have. Amen. 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 Amen.
for this. You don't have anybody. Don't forget this Friday and Saturday is the men's conference. All those men who have not registered and want to go, please uh, see if you can register. If you uh, there's a flyer. There's all the information. This where's that? And if you have any more questions, you can see Brother David or or Pastor, and they'll give you the information about the conference that is coming up this Friday and Saturday, the third and the fourth. Friday afternoon and Saturday morning, and then they're going to have, have breakfast, and then they're going to have a split session. So that is for all men and teenage boys and everything else. That is the men's conference. Right. Ladies, on the 11th, the following week, we will be having our ladies' Christmas fellowship. All ladies, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For all the ladies to be there. This is going to be, we're going to change it up a little bit this year. Instead of having it at the church, we will have it at Sister Mary. Everybody knows Sister Mary. Yeah. Sister Mary. Yeah. And we appreciate her opening her home to us for our Ladies Christmas Fellowship. Amen. Also, uh, we'll be doing something also a little different. We will be doing a craft, and we will be doing a gift exchange. And I'll send out the text today. Yeah. With all that information about the gift exchange, the craft, and then... I do not know your address, so Sister Mary can give you her address. I know where she lives, but I don't know the address. So Sister Mary can give you all that information. So all the ladies, I want you to be there. Amen. 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 All the ladies. Everybody. All right. Okay. Then on the 12th, don't forget that is Evans going away. And we do have, uh, I sent that text out, and I do have people signed up for it the food for that and I appreciate those that have signed up for that and also on the 19th got a lot of stuff going on is our Christmas fellowship for the church it will be immediately following the service Evans is also immediately following the service here but it's going to be more um, finger foods but the Christmas dinner for the church it will be a full dinner Right. And I will be sending out a text. I'm good for mm -hmm. that. I will be sending out a text because I need people to sign up for food. Good if you want to eat, you will bring the food. Yeah, so we will get that done. So I will be sending out a text for that. And also, I know Shai is not here, but she also was going to get with, I think it was hers and Sister Redson's idea to do uh, Scott's Dazzle. And that is this, the fifth. The fifth. Uh, we're going to at 5 o'clock, meet at the church. All those who are interested in going to Scott's Dazzle, we think it would be something good for the church. If you don't like to drive at night, need a ride, we can pack everybody in the best we can. Right. David has a truck, I have a van, we're just going to get everybody right. that wants to go. So we, we, if you want to go, we meet here at the church. It's free, but it's just going to be something fun to do. It's free, Susan, but it's just going to be something to do. It'll be fun. All right. And... Praise God. I think that's praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise God. I'm going to turn that off just so it doesn't interfere. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this morning, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. technology is great once you got it working. Right. But when it's not, Come on. it's not. Right. <laughs> we, will, not. we will just go with what we have. Praise Come on. God. Right. This morning, if you'll stand and turn the word of God this morning, there's a lot of things going on, so... Um, we want you all to be a part of that. But today we're glad to have some visitors in the house. We're glad to have uh, Amen. Sister Audrey and her daughters here from India. <laughs> Praise God. Give me a little more on the mic here. Praise God. You'll turn to your Bibles. Also, I think Sunday School is on the, my left-hand side this morning. And, of course, nursery uh, has probably already been found by those that need it. Praise God. God. Glad to have you all in the house of God Hallelujah. this morning. Amen. Excited Amen. about what God Amen. wants to do and what's, yes. what He wants to say Amen. to us today. Yes. You'll turn your Bibles to Luke, the first chapter, and I'm going to read from verse number 35. Mm. 
And it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the ho that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Praise God. Let's put our Bibles Thank down Jesus. and talk to the Lord for a moment. Yes. Father, we love you today. Yes, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, for the Thank power you. of your word. We're so Thank thankful, you, Lord, for the power of your plan, for the Thank wisdom you, of your plan of salvation, Hallelujah. for who you are, God, and for Thank your revelation, you, Lord. Lord. Yes. We pray that you would touch us today, yes. Lord, in your house, Lord, yes. as our hearts are open and our Thank minds, you, Lord, Lord, to receive Thank of the engrafted word of truth. Thank touch you, us today Jesus. and anoint what's yes. done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You can be seated. Praise God. I like to feel the presence of God when I'm in the house of God. Amen. I like the worship of the people of God because we're inviting the presence of God into a place. We're saying, God, we want you here. And when you say, God, I want you here in your worship, he shows up. Praise God. He comes to you. Praise God. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Right. And praise God. I want to be one of those people that's giving him praise. Yes. That's Amen. It. Amen. Amen. In, in talking about this, the composition of God, why it matters mm -hmm. to you, right. why it matters to Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise How many want to know the one that you talk to? That's right. Amen. Amen. Praising Amen. God Amen. and talking to God in prayer Amen. is so important. This past week, you know, we had the prayer and the fasting for Brother Anthony. And I'll tell you the story in case some of you don't really know. But I think it was on Wednesday, she was planning on making a decision. And the hospital said, you have to make a decision of whether or not you're going to pull the plug on Brother Anthony and uh, or allow him to go for long-term treatment. And as it looked at the moment, everybody was saying to her, you know, at the hospital, hey, you just need to just, you know, uh, you know, prepare him for long treatment, but a lot of people were saying, no, you probably just need to just let him pass or, or see what's going to happen with a full plug. Mm -hmm. So we, we fasted and prayed on Tuesday. And praise God, on, on Tuesday, was it Wednesday or Tuesday? It was Wednesday, the very next day after we prayed. I get a call early in the morning, Sister Susan, saying that there's something different. Right. There's something different that's happened. Yes. Yeah. And you know, everybody knows Sister Susan. <laughs> Is she a little bit on the excited? I am. Is yeah. she a little bit on the positive side? No. Yeah. 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 But she was there. Yeah. And she noticed some things that the people that were there didn't notice. Right. There was a nurse that was her first day on the staff. And she was there and she just read the charts and said, well, it looks the same to me. She didn't bother doing any testing. So I called up right after I heard this from Sister Susan. I just wanted to kind of check before I did something on group me. Right. And so the nurse said to me then, uh, you know, I don't see any changes. And I, then she let out that this is her first day. Yeah. And I said, really? I said, have you done any tests? And she says, no, I, didn't, I haven't done any tests, but the chart says what's here. And, you know, she never bothered really to interact with him. Mm -hmm. So also, Brother David was heading down Maricopa <laughs> on a job. And he heard the news and said, hey, I can stop into the hospital. So he, he did that. He convinced yeah. to actually stop into the hospital to right. check it out. Right. And so he went into the hospital. And by the time between, I guess, my mm -hmm. conversation with her and uh, I think Sister Maritz had called up and, and spoke to the, to the same nurse and got kind of the same results. But when Brother David got there, she said to him, yes, there's a difference. I did a test. Yeah. Yeah. He's responding. Just like yeah. Sister Susan was saying, he's yeah. responding. Amen. He passed his neurological test. Amen. And so needless to say, the whole prognosis has changed. Wow. Now, he's, he's not out of the woods by a long shot, but hey, there's some positive news. Yes. 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 And she made the decision the other day to just put him on the long-term care list, yeah. meaning that they're just going to put a trach in his throat, uh -huh. food, feeding tube in his stomach, and we're going to give him a chance. Right. Praise God. Right. So that's a great thing. Yeah. Great thing. Yeah. That's a great thing. Yeah. To see that kind of move, we went back up to the hospital. Of course, you can see him responding yeah. when you talk to him. Right. He's opening his eyes. He's trying to communicate as best he can under such heavy sedation. Yeah. Yeah. But praise God. God is working. Yes. Yeah. 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 That the prayers of the righteous yes. have yes. yes. God. And God listens when you fast. Right, right. You get his attention. You're yes. saying that what's going on, what I'm praying about is.
is more important than me getting the sustenance, right. the energy for my body. Right. Praise right. God. God listens. Yes, Praise God. Yes, it's important to know who he is. You know, yes. composition yes. is the nature of something. Mm -hmm. Ingredients. Right. What constitutes it? What, what it's made of. So when we talk about God, it's important to understand who God is. Yes. It's, it's important to understand what God is made of, what he's comprised of. You know, this is a discussion that took place in about the, uh, the third century, fourth century actually, but in the, the year 326 AD. And this is when Constantine was trying to put together the Roman, uh, the Roman nation as an empire. And he was trying to consolidate power. And what he did is he got this religion that had attracted people like flies. And he wanted to control that to control the people. So he got all the bishops together. And he says, you're going to make a decision. But you see, when you're making a decision on something as important as who God is, that is not a political thing. That is not something that political people can get into the mix and make that decision. Right, right. It's not something you make by edict or by consensus. Everybody's sitting in a room and agreeing on this stuff about God. Right. It's not that kind of decision. It's something that the Word of God tells us clearly. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But this is what happened. And understanding the composition of God is so important. Let's go to, he, to, to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy is where God talks to his people. He gives them something that's going to be, the, you know, the book of Deuteronomy actually means the book of remembrance. So God lays something towards the beginning of this book, you know, that he wanted them to remember foundationally. We're going to remember, we're going to put this in our minds because this is what distinguishes us from every other nation. You know, all the other nations that preceded Israel and the Jewish nation, they basically were polytheistic, meaning they had many gods. Whatever part of their life that they could segment and think that this was a, I can make this a category in my life, things that affected me, they had a god over that in many cultures. So they had multiple gods. But here comes a religion that has one god. And here's something unique about that one god. He cannot be seen. And there are no statues. There are no images for us to look at. That was something that was unique. All the other gods, you can see them. You can see their graven images. But God made it a point and said, I'm not going to have a graven image. There's not going to be something for you to look at. There's not going to be something for you to see. But there's going to be a name for you to call. That's how he did it. It was unique. It was different. And so a lot of times, you know, the Israelites, they struggled with that. Because everybody else had gods around them or had, you know, at one point a king. They didn't right. have that yeah. stuff. God was doing something different. Yeah. Right. And you know something, when God does something in your life, you can't compare yourself to somebody else. Right. 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 You can't compare your situation and say, well, God hasn't done this and he's done that for them, but he hasn't done this for me and, and I'm just suffering. I'm just not. You cannot compare yourself to right. somebody else right. Right. because you are walking a different walk. Right. God has brought you through yes. different circumstances. Yes. Maybe yes. you've been healed of cancer. Maybe you had a sickness. Maybe you had something that God healed you from, and maybe the next person never did. Yep. But God's doing something different yes. in every one yes. of our yes. lives. Yes. That's right. That's right. You know, I, I, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and I just simply said that God knows the amount of time that you have here. Yes. Some people 45 years. Right. Some people 80. Some people 110. Some people 14. Right. God knows the amount of years yeah. that you have on this planet. Yes. Yes. And so he deals with you accordingly. Yes. Yes. Praise God. He's Amen. working on everybody's life. The Bible says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the innermost parts of your being. Yeah. God is searching you. God is looking. His camera is your spirit. Yes. The breath that you take. Yes. That's his camera. Yes. That's how he's recording everything that goes on inside of you. How you react to everything. Yes. He has a record of how you felt and what you thought and what right. you said yeah. in your heart about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. He has that record sealed. Right. And the Bible says that when we die, our spirits go back to God who gave it. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. 
they become his property. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. But the composition of something is what makes it up, what it mm -hmm. consists of. Right. Praise God. In John 1 and 18, the Bible says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, is given a location. He hath declared him. Praise God. Nobody's seen God. Here's a contrast that's going on in the scripture. Nobody's seen God at any time. But the only begotten, and whenever the Son is talked about, listen at this. Whenever the Son is talked about, it's as the begotten. Okay. Yes. Okay. Many, there was a start date for the son. Right. That's right. right. God never operated his son. Let's turn, turn to Hebrews chapter 1. God never operated his son until the final days, until the last days. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, in verse number 1, the Bible says, God who at sundry times, let me give him a chance to put that scripture up there real quick. God who at sundry times, sundry means different, and in diverse manners, different, various manners, spake in times past mm -hmm. unto the fathers by the prophets. So in many different ways, Ezekiel was a prophet of the Old Testament, my namesake. But he's a prophet in the Old Testament where God used him to do demonstrative things. Some of them, if I mentioned them before lunch here today, you'd probably get sick to your stomach. But God told Ezekiel to do some things so that it was a demonstration to the people of God's love and sometimes God's putting up with them. But he was a very demonstrative prophet. And many other prophets just spoke. God spoke through them in different ways. Miracles through the signs and wonders through other prophets' hands. Mm -hmm. But God spoke to the fathers. And this is Paul talking. He says, the fathers being our, our heritage. Verse number two says, In these last days, hath in these last days spoken unto us by son. Now this is Paul writing in his time. He says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse number three. Who being the brightness of his glory. Who's that? The son that he's speaking by is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. God has how many persons? One. His person. The express image, or when you look at God, when you want to see God, the right. face you're going to see is Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. The Bible says God, who at sundry times in times past, has spoken to the fathers. Right. I mean, the, the, the Israelites in, in times going past, in various manners, it, by the prophets, as in these last days spoken to us by Son, His Son, who is the brightness of His glory. And the express image of his person. Praise God. So, God has not been seen ever at any time. But through the face of Jesus. Yes. When you see Jesus, you see the face of right. God. That's it. Praise right. God. Right. Jesus says in John 10 and 30, I and my Father are one. Right. Right. Now, I'll tell you what happened when he said that. Mm -hmm. They didn't just applaud him. They picked up stones because they understood exactly what he was saying, aye, and they got aye. ready to stone him. Aye, yep. They weren't able to because he walked through the crowd in the way that only God could. <laughs> Knowing exactly where to be, right. that they weren't looking, and he got through uh -huh. where they were at. Right. But he says, I and my father are one. Mm -hmm. right. And then he says here in Luke 10 and 22, all things are delivered to me of my father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. You'll see Jesus talk in this very particular language. The Son is pronounced as the Son. Why does he stick to that? Because there's a role that God had to play as Son. He could be nothing else. He had to be Son to play this particular role in our redemption. Right. Without it, we would not be redeemed. Yes. God had to have that role. He had to come as the Son. He had to. There's, there's no way out of it. Right, right. 
And in the scripture we open with, Luke 135, I want to show you something. In Luke 135, the Bible says, And the angel answered and said unto her, this is Gabriel, speaking to Mary. He said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing. Everybody say, holy thing. Holy thing. Why was it a holy thing? Because it was resulted by the power of the highest overshadowing her and the Holy Ghost coming upon her. However you want to phrase that. That what happened when God overshadowed Mary, what was produced was a holy thing. Amen. Had no name at that point. Amen. Had no name. That's important. Right. The reason that's important, because then Gabriel says, that which is born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right. See, what didn't happen in a lot of people in, in Christendom have made a mistake here. Because they think that prior to the birth, the Son, God the Son, was up in heaven. And the Father said, hey, I need you to go down and die for them. I need you first to become a human. It's not what happened. That's right, come on. The power of the highest yes, come on, come on. overshadowed Mary. Right. That's right. And then Gabriel stopped on purpose. He says that holy thing. Not the sun came down. Mm -mm. That holy thing. Yeah. That shall be called the Son of God. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Amen. Let me tell you why that's important. Because Isaiah tells us in Isaiah uh, 9 and 6, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Let me stop right there. The government shall be upon his shoulder. What does that mean? That means headship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The headship mm -hmm. shall be upon his shoulders. What headship are we talking about? Colossians 1 and 19. Give me that, please. Colossians 1 and 9, rather. I think it's no, 119, I'm sorry. And then Colossians 2, 9. But here's what God did. For it pleased the Father that in him, speaking about Jesus, should all the fullness dwell, yes. live. All the fullness should live in him. And so back to Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Listen, the only place in the Word of God that God is referred to with this kind of description before Father is here. No other place does the Word of God call him Everlasting Father. There's a reason for that. Because God is making specific through the mouth of Isaiah exactly who was going to be born in Bethlehem. Yep. This son that's given is the everlasting father. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, when it's when 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 the, the spirit of the highest, when God overshadows Mary and she brings forth this holy thing, and Gabriel says, that will be called the son of of God, because what's happening here? It's the Father. Mm -hmm. Isaiah told us before he was ever born what he could be called. The Father's name shall be called Father, yeah. Everlasting Father. At that, just yes. to make sure there's no, you know, mixing it up as to what Father we're talking about. The Everlasting Father. Yes, yes. Praise yes. God. Is what he's to be called. The Prince right. of Peace. Amen. Now, here's something that Jesus says when he's here. First, I'm going to actually want to do something a little different here. John 3.16 says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, getting back to this whole point of begotten. Whenever the son is mentioned, it's always begotten because he didn't exist before. Yeah, right, right. But at the same time, Jesus said, and he was right and accurate in saying it, before Abraham, I am. Right. Amen. How could he not exist? How could the son not exist? And yet Jesus who was the son, say that he existed prior to Abraham. Right. Because of almighty God that he was, the father. Right, right. Hmm. 
the father that dwelt in him existed right. way before right. Abraham. Right. Right. Praise God. Right. He existed way before Abraham. So he'd say that. So here's, he says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever right. believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what God did is he gave his only begotten son. Not the son that was already up in heaven. That's a very important point. In Psalms 2, 7, he says, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day, this is prophetically speaking, this is one of those times when there's not this actual conversation or this actual statement, but it's used to describe or to let us know an event did take place. So he says, This day have I begotten thee. Acts 13.33 quotes the same thing. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus again, as it is written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. In Hebrews 5 and 5 it says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that saith unto him, Thou art my son, this day. Have I begotten thee? Begotten means to birth. Yes. Or give birth to. So the son had a day that he was birthed. Right. Because the son was inside of him dwelt the father. Right. But the father was in a diminished role as a human being. Praise God. Yes. That's why Jesus said this. As the son, but he did say the father dwelt in him, but he said this as the son... He says in John 5, uh, 19, pull that up for me. I'm not sure if that's the scripture I gave you. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing. Everybody say, the Son can do not. The Son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the Father do, for whatsoever things he seeth the Father do, these also doeth the Son likewise. Whatever he sees the Father do, that's what he does likewise. In other words, Amen. you don't know this. He said before that nobody knows the Father but the Son. And nobody knows the Son right, but the Father. Right, right. And, and the only people that are going to know the Father is who the Son reveals them to. Amen. All you saw Jesus was is just a normal person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had no idea that the Father was inside of him. Unless he revealed that to you. And so here's Jesus revealing to them that the Father's inside of him. Jesus says that the Son can do nothing by himself. You think that it's me doing it, but it's not. It's the Father yes. that's inside of me that's doing it. Which is consistent with what Isaiah said. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Yes. Here's the Father Amen. inside of him, and that's what's doing all the work. And Jesus is acknowledging it right here. Right. 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 He says, it's not me. That's right. It's, it's not the son, but it's the Father that dwells in him. Amen. And then Jesus says in John 12 and 44, Jesus cried. Now he's he's yelling this out to a crowd of people. He's getting their attention. He's letting them know this fact because it's important for them to know. He yells out in John 12, 44, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Right. And the very next verse he says, He that seeth me, seeth him. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. How can you get any clearer? Jesus is trying to become transparent to people that Come people can understand, but he's, he keeps letting these little, little right. pieces Ooh, of information yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke opaquely. As a matter of fact, at one point his disciples tell him, they say, Jesus, please, just speak to us in simple terms. Now you're doing that, and we appreciate that. That's in John 16, 28. They say, we're so appreciative. Just please, from now on, just talk to us in simple terms. Because Jesus always spoke opaquely. Right, right, right. He spoke in such a way that you had to really want to know what he was right, saying yeah, right. before you understood it. Right. Many times disciples pulled him aside oh, after giving a, a yeah. profound parable, yeah. and they would ask him, what does that mean? Because they wanted to have further Amen. meaning, and he gladly shared it with them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But he spoke opaquely many times. In John 14 and 10, he's being very transparent with his yeah. disciples when he says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? 
The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. He says, That's right. If you don't believe, because Philip asked him, he says, Show us the Father. Jesus Come said on. to him in all the disciples just moments before that, from this moment on, you know the Father, mm -hmm. and you've seen him. Mm -hmm. Of course that shocked them. Yeah. Of course they wanted to know, right. Jesus, right. show us the Father. You said we've seen him. <laughs> show us the Father. That's right. Because knowing and seeing are two very different things. Right, right. right. Yeah. When I say I know somebody, right. it's not something that, that a sense of mind can actually detect or, or say. It's, it has to do with right, me right. understanding that person, yeah. having spent time with them, having a relationship with them. Right, right, right. Right? Right. But when I then use the word see after that, in, or in, in conjunction with it, I am specifically focusing in on my sight, that I actually see them. And that's what Jesus was saying. He says, you know, you, you not only, in verse number 7 of, of John 14, he says, you not only... Know him, know him. If you know me, you know my father. Henceforth, you not only know him, but you see him. You've seen him too. Yeah. And Philip can't help but ask the question that any of us standing there at that <coughs> moment would ask. Show us the father and it will satisfy us. I'll be completely satisfied. Just show me the father. Right, right. And Jesus says in verse number nine, have, he says, have I not been so long time with you? Come on. Listen, listen. Yeah. Just so there's no mis mis misunderstanding. Philip was very clear. You're baiting us, Jesus. We know how you do. <laughs> and so, show us the Father. Right. Come on. Real simple, Jesus. Right. Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. It suffices. Right. And Jesus' answer to him is a really kind of shocking thing. He says, have I not been Come so on. long with you? Right. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. As a matter of fact, he addresses, addresses right. Philip. He just he knows everybody else is asking the same question. But he addresses right. Philip. Have I not been so long time with you, Philip? How sayest thou? Show us the Father. Right. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. This is what he says to, to I mean, to, this is, these are his disciples. He's getting very clear, very yes, blunt. Very. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And this is the knowledge that Jesus put in their Glory heads. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't put this knowledge in everybody. He said, this, this is a Come very on. intimate That's setting. Right. This is just his disciples. And he goes through chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. You know, That's but right. in those three chapters especially, 16, 14, 15, and 16, he is dealing with his disciples. Giving them key knowledge that he never gave them before. Mm. Yes. Come on. Because he's about to depart. Right. Praise God. That's and it's important right. that they understand these concepts and understand who God is. Yes. yes. But every time it's talked about the Son of God, he's speaking of a begotten time. Right. The only begotten. And whenever you see the word begotten, that means a start date. The sun started on a date. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that's when God came in flesh for the express purpose of dying on the cross. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked about this at, at nauseam, I'm sure. Jesus. And but but this is what God has, has given me today. But one the death of Jesus, the reason it was so important that there be a death. There had to be a death. That's it is right. extremely important because when when there's sin, the Bible says. In, let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 17. The first time death is ever mentioned, it's in relationship to Adam and Eve sinning. But prior to them sinning, you know, I don't know if it's a prophecy or he's just telling what's going to happen if they do. But he says here, Jesus said unto them in, um, or actually, go back there, Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. I have it in my notes here, thank you. You have it there? Genesis 2.17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but to me, that is very plain language. God is saying, it doesn't need a lot of interpretation. God is saying, we can't, listen, you know, there's a lot of people that, try to find mistakes in the Word of God or try to see where the Word of God contradicts itself. But right here, I'm telling you, it's very plain and clear. 
God says the day, he's that very day you eat of that fruit, or that, the fruit of that tree, you will surely die. God's very clear about that. But there, unless there's something to keep them from dying. Now we know that at this point is the first time death is mentioned. Something's going to have to die. Right, right. Something's right. going to have to die. And see, this played right into God's plan. Satan thought he was messing God's plan up, but he played right into God's hands. That's right. Thank you. God knew when he created Adam and Eve that yes. there was going to be a time that they needed That's to have right. his yes. intervention. Yes. Or they were going to stop existing. Right. Right. They were going to, of course, be destined to hell. Right. They were going to surely die. Right. And so in Genesis 3 and, 6 and 21, chapter 3, verse 21, after Adam and Eve sinned, here's what happened. In uh, verse three, chapter 3 and verse 21, unto Adam and also his wife did God make coats of skins right. and clothe them. An animal died. This is the very first animal sacrifice. But the principle that's being laid here is sacrifice. It's, it's the uh, substitutional sacrifice. Awesome. This is God's principle. Yes, you will surely die. Unless the devil heard that. That's all the devil heard. So he went flying after Eve to trick, try to mess, mess them up. Mm -hmm. I want him to die. I want him to die. Okay. And not only that, he got the power of death. Go to Romans 6 and 16. Romans 6 and 16, we find a principle in the Word of God that transcends time. Of course, it's written in Romans, but this is one of those principles that goes, just like most principles or all the principles in the Word of God, they go the spectrum of time. It says, know ye not, this is Paul talking, that to whomever you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or, right, or of obedience unto righteousness. And at this point, I believe in Scripture, yes. is where Satan got the power of death. This is where he got the power of death. Right. Hebrews 2, 14 lets us know that he did have the power of death. Yes. Hebrews 2, and verse number 14 lets us know that he actually had the power of death. And this is where we find that out. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, in other words, we're made of flesh and blood, children meaning us, human beings, he also himself, speaking about Jesus, took likewise part of the same, that through death, the whole purpose of him taking on flesh, right here, is through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, Hallelujah. the devil. Woo! He got it when Adam and Eve gave it up to him. When they decided to listen to him instead of what God had commanded them explicitly, saying that the day you eat of that tree, you're going to surely die. When they decided to listen to him and eat of that fruit, they gave him the power of death. I kind of find this out because of in Job. The Bible says in the book of Job that after Satan came around for round number two, you remember he had like two rounds with Job. Right. First round, he took all Job's stuff. Then he came after Job's flesh. And he says to God, skin for skin. Let me hurt his flesh. And he's going to curse you. And God says, go ahead. Just do not take his life. Right. So if God tells Satan, do not take his life, what's implied there is he had the power to do it. Mm -hmm. Am I extrapolating or am I in the book? Mm -hmm. He had the power to take his life. And so God says, do not. But Satan had the power of death, evidently here. But through death, Jesus was going to take it back. Yeah, because he yeah. started the substitutional sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And right. that is the redemption Amen. plan of God. Oh, yeah. To have somebody else die in your place. Right, right. God knew yeah. that, you were, yeah. that we were going to sin. The Bible yeah. says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Somebody had to die yeah. in our place. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody had to take our place. Yeah. And you know what? Nobody qualified. Right. Right. The Bible says all have sinned and gone astray. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. There's not one righteous, he says. And so nobody can fit the bill. Yes. That's why he had to come himself. Yes. And this is, what, this is what Isaiah lets us know. This is what Isaiah lets us know. Isaiah lets us know that for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is born and is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is all yes. God. Amen. Amen. He's coming to do what nobody else can do. 
right? Amen. Hallelujah. He was coming to live perfectly. The biggest thing that he did was living perfectly. Amen. Amen. 33 and a half years. The Bible says he, he could have just, because he was God, he could have just came here because he was God mm -hmm. and never had sinned and used that righteousness right. that he, he came on the planet with right. and said, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. But no. He decided right. to live the 33 and a half years and be tempted at all points right. as are we. Right. That was important. God had to identify. Right. He had to go through the same thing and the same temptations that all of us go through yes. and, and, and went over them. Yes. And to overcome them. Yes. Because in overcoming them, yes. God. Glory to God. then he could give his life a ransom. That's how he puts it. You know those hostage videos? When the guy's standing there and you know the guys have the sword or and they're all masked up, of course. They have a sword or they have something threatening to cut this guy's head off. You know? But here's Jesus saying, I will be your ransom. I will be the one that dies so you can go free. That's what he did. He died so we can go free. He came as a man. That's why all these, you know, now, I, I, I haven't mentioned it here today, but, but the doctrine that espoused or that came, that emerged from that meeting that I spoke about earlier yep. when Constantine put it together was the doctrine of the Trinity. It was not formed then. It took about three centuries for them to form the complete understanding that they have today, which states that God is, there's one God, is what they say, that's in three persons. The problem with that is Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Let's go there. That's the scripture that I mentioned and I didn't read it earlier. First time. This is the fundamental scripture that God, this is the understanding that God gave his people in the book of Deuteronomy. It's in the book of Remembering. Well, this is something foundationally, this is one of those foundational tracks that God wanted to lay down that was crucial to their understanding of this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So let me break this whole scripture down. So, hear, O Israel, the Lord. Now, the word Lord actually means a person, a, a, a ruler with authority over others. And it's not a deity-specific word, meaning this, that it's not only used for God. We don't just use the word Lord for God. We use the word Lord to speak about somebody who's in authority, a ruler. That's a very important thing. It's not just a God-exclusive thing. It means master. It means somebody that's a ruler. So now, because there are many people, or many uh, people that can actually have that title as Lord, he's identifying exactly which one he's talking about. The Lord, our God, that particular person in authority or ruler or master. I'm talking about God is what he's saying. So it's not even talking about how many gods there are. Although it's implied that there's only one. But this scripture is not just talking about how many gods there are. It's talking about the composition or the makeup of God. Yes, yes. It says, so the Lord, our God, that particular Lord or master, is one, one right. Lord or master or person. Right, right. Yes, yes. Just one. Yes. 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 Foundationally, he gives this understanding. It's like the, the print that's laid in at the early part. It's part of the foundation. So everything built upon that has to be consistent with that same understanding that he gave at the very beginning. Yes, correct. And so when you come to different places in the Word of God and you see a different part of God, a different role that he's played, a different thing that he's done, you have to understand that there's not now an additional God or person in the in in in, in a in a um, in a Godhead per se. Okay. There's not an additional person, but there's God working in that way, in that role. It's the same God, the same Father, that same Spirit. The Bible says that you know uh, the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. The, the, upon the face of the deep, rather, mm -hmm. in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 2. Right. It says the Spirit of God moved upon. It's the first time we see it, the Spirit of God's mentioned. Because God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. You have to conceptualize. What is he? What, what is he? He's a spirit. God wants us to understand that. In the book of John uh, 4 and verse 24, it says, For God is a spirit. Come on. So we find out about him. Let's go there real quick. John 4, let's go to verse 23 first. John 4 and verse 23. We, we hear, we're going to see the, the word God and Father interchangeably used here to understand this. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's it. Let me stop there for a minute. Spirit and truth is so important. There's a lot of people that have the spirit. But then the truth part is we got to have both. You've got you to know what the Word of God, and that's what grounds us. The Word of God is what grounds us. Because I can go out and say, I had a dream and blah, 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 blah. And then it's just me just talking. My dream better align up with the Word of God. That's it. That's it. I better not be talking something out of my head and out of the Word of God. It better be consistent with the Word of God. It has to be spirit and truth. I need to be spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Yes. Him. The Father wants that to worship Him. Verse number 24. God is a spirit. That Father is a spirit. That's why Isaiah can say, For unto us a, a son is born, a child is given, and the government shall be the birth of service, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, yes. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, because he's a spirit. Yes. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. God is a spirit, is what we find out. He's not a person. He's not a, a human being. That's why he had to take on flesh. He had no flesh to die for us. He needed somebody. He yes. needed a death. Yeah. He told Adam and Eve at the very beginning, and he cannot lie. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. He cannot lie. The Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. Right. But he told him, he says, the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. That's the first time death's mentioned. Death is a punishment. Right. The Bible says the soul that sinned shall surely die. Yes. But there had to be something. And God introduced this concept of sacri sacrificial substitute it's for sin. The sacrificial substitute, praise God, for sin. And in Leviticus... Three and uh, Leviticus rather seventeen and eleven, Leviticus seventeen and eleven. God shows us this point very saliently in the Old Testament. He shows us that He was using animal sacrifice to atone for sin. It wasn't just something they made up. This is what God actually He designed it this way. He says it very clearly: For the life of all flesh is in the blood, and I have given it upon the altar to you upon the altar. To make atonement for your sins. He was telling me in the Old Testament, this is what I've given animals life for. This is one of the purposes. To make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the souls. Then get uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 9 and verse number 22. But he makes this point that it's blood that atones for the soul. Blood represents life. Because he says the, the life of all flesh is in the blood. He says it's the blood that atones for the soul. So the death of life or the cessation of life of a life is what he uses to atone. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 9.22, and, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no, no. remission right. of sins. Right. And so he lets us know that it's that important. Right. Right. That's why he had to come. And you see, God, I always say this. That God never asks us to do anything that he hasn't done himself. Right. I mean, it sounds cute like a, a cliche thing, but it is so true. Last Sunday, I happened to mention something, and I had somebody, Brother Nick, come up to me after church and say something that I never even thought about. I've never heard it before. But I, I, I mentioned a scripture where John baptized <laughs> Jesus, and when Jesus came out of the water, the dove, you know, for John's purpose only, the Bible says the, the dove came down and, and it, it, the Holy Ghost came down as the form, in the form of a dove and descended upon Jesus. And John knew that was the one that was going to be able to baptize with fire. Right. And Brother Nick came up to me after church and says, Pastor, you know, you said that. And so here it is, Jesus getting water and spirit. Because Jesus said it before John. John didn't want to baptize him because John was like, hey, I know your reputation. I know what my, my mother told me about you and all this stuff. And all this stuff was going around in his head. He says, I have need that you baptize me. Jesus says, no. That all righteousness should be fulfilled. So here's Jesus. 
getting baptized and the dove descending on him. He's our example. He didn't need to be baptized for his sins. No. But so that all righteousness could be fulfilled. But whatever he's asked us to do, he's already done it. Yes, yes. Praise God. And he's made a way. He's made a way. Praise God. But in this whole composition of, of, of Jesus and understanding who he is, it's so important that we understand that the Bible says in Luke one thirty five that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. And that's where he starts as the Son of God. But then Jesus lets you know what he's made of when he's asked the question. When his disciples ask him to show up, to put up earth, you know, to show up, show us what, you, show us what you're saying, Jesus. Jesus says, when you see me, right. you've seen the Father. Amen. Right. Amen. Because Jesus wanted them to understand that God has loved the world so much mm -hmm. that he overshadowed Mary. Yes. And that holy thing, yes. which was called the Son of God, was God's, it was done for a purpose yes. so that God could rescue mankind. Amen. 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 So he could face death. He needed a body to face death with. Mm -hmm. Satan got tired. Yes. And God, see, now the wisdom of God, Paul talks about that in the book of the Ephesians and different other places in his writings. He talks about the wisdom, of, the manifold wisdom of God. It's an incredible thing because God foresaw all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He knew that Satan was going to trip Adam and Eve up and he let it happen because he had a plan. Right. And he also told them in Genesis 3.15 about the prophecy. Yes. He says, I'm going to put enmity between your seed and her seed. And that enmity is going to bruise your head, and you're going to bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. What's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus, right. and really about the end game. When Satan was tired of Jesus messing with his setup. You know, because Jesus always rebuked and criticized the religious authority. That was a hypocritical religious authority. Mm -hmm. They were going by the law, but it was all hypocrisy. Right. They wasn't from the heart. There were so many things for show, and Jesus was calling them out. Satan had set it up. They were following him. They, you know, that's the whole thing. You can be religious and going through all the motions. You can be in church and everything and, and going through all the motions. But Satan can just be comfortable with what you're doing. Come on, come on. If you're not really changing. Right, right. God wants us to change. Yes. God wants us to become more like yes. him. But if we go through motions, right. then what happens is Satan's satisfied with you going to church on Sunday. Come on. He's satisfied with you being what everybody thinks you are. And then when you're by yourself, you're living like the devil. <laughs> Right. He's happy with that. Right, right. right. That will tell you we got them all fooled. Right. <laughs> but God wants there to be a real change. Yes. Praise God. Amen. But He came so that He came so that He could pay that price. Amen. That we couldn't pay on our own. That's right. Praise God. Let's stand today. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. Pull that one up for me, please. Says, but to us, this is Paul talking. He talked about there being many gods and other religions and all that. And he says, but to us, there is but one God. One, right. One God. Mm -hmm. Who is that? The Father, of whom all things, of whom are all things. And we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. And we by him. Praise God. There's only one God, he says. That's the Father. The Bible says in, in Ephesians 4, get that for me, please, in 4 and 5. Ephesians 4 and 4 and 5. It says... Okay, my, my help back there. <laughs> Praise God. Ephesians 4 and 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
Right. right. One. Right. Amen. Come on. And I, I say this because if you go back to Genesis, the, or the Deuteronomy rather, where he says, there, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Yeah. That didn't change. Right. He's still one Lord. That's yes, right. we have Jesus on the scene here, but he's still one Lord mm -hmm. because of the fact that the Father is a spirit. God is right. a spirit. Right. Right. And he's in the Son. Right. He, Jesus says, the Father dwells in, dwell means to live. Mm -hmm. right. He lives in me. Right, right. Praise God. But unto us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Right. And then verse number four of chapter, um, four of chapter of Ephesians four, it says there is but there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Praise God. God only has one spirit, and of course, one body, we know that. But there's only one begotten. There's only one son. Whenever the son is mentioned, it's as the begotten. And we have to understand that. Understanding who God is helps you to pray to God. Yes. 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 When you understand, I, I've heard people say to me, Pastor, I... I you know, I want to know who I need to pray to. I mean, I see all these titles and names of God, and, and I, I don't know, understand who I need to talk to. Well, our religious world has made a lot of people very confused. Right. When you say that God is three persons, mm -hmm. yeah. listen, we were made in the image of God. Yeah. We were made in the image of God. Yeah. When, the, when I talk about a person, I'm not talking about three people when I look right. at her. Right. I'm thinking yeah. about just one person. Well, although she's made of spirit, body, and, and soul, right. and the two I can't really see. Right, right. But I understand that the combination of the breath of God into a body right. that he created from the dust right. is what constitutes a soul. Right. right. That's the Bible says, God formed man from the dust of the earth. This is Genesis 2, 7. And breathed into him the, the breath of life. Right. And man became, at that moment, at that right. instance, a living soul. Yeah. So a soul, the definition of a soul, is a body. That God has breathed into, yes. given right, life right, to, right. Yes. then you become a soul. Because yes. the Bible lets us know that once you're dead, this is what happens. Right. God simply takes his spirit back. Right, right. 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 Hmm. The Bible says that, that you know, that um, the spirit of the dead person goes back to God. Get that for me. Ecclesiastes 7 or 12, 7. Good to have word for everything. I like this next right. statement. I want to have word for it, and I want to understand right, right, what, I'm, what right. I'm talking about. Right. Then shall dust return unto the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. God Amen. gave us our spirit, so right. it returns back to Him. Right. Praise God. And it's important for us to know that when I'm talking to God, I'm talking to the one. When I say the name Jesus. I'm talking to the one that has all power in his hand. All power. I'm right. talking about the everlasting right. Father. Right. 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 That's why we call him the name. We glorify the Lord. That's why we can call him the name. He says, whatever you do, in name or in deed, word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. That's it. Because you right. are addressing Amen. the one that's able to do anything. Lord. You say that name. When you have to understand who he is, you're talking to the one that's able Thank to change everything. You don't have to do a prayer to Jesus and then now I have to go to his father. Right. 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 There's one God. That's right. Amen. Amen. One. Amen. I don't have to buy, I can't bypass him. Jesus says, in giving them the understanding of who he was, he said, no man comes to the Father but by me. And then when Jesus was done in John 16. In verse number 26, I believe it is, or 27, he says to his disciples that you don't have to, no longer do you ask, I'm, I'm never longer going to say, ask the Father in my name. In that day, he's talking about when he resurrected, yeah. you'll ask me. Right. I will do it. Right. Anything you ask in my name, I will do it. Right. In my name, I will do it. Right. Praise God. Because when he met them on the mount, the first thing he said is all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right. Yes. That's why whatever you ask, you ask in his name. His name. Right. 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 He's going to do it. He promised to do it. 
Right. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. When we address Jesus, that's all yes. that we need yes. to say. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because when I address yes. Jesus, yes. I'm addressing the everlasting Father. Glory yes. to God. Amen. I'm addressing the Prince of Peace. Yes. Yes. I'm addressing the one that, that came to yes. give me victory. Yes. Give me power. Yes. Praise yes. God. I'm addressing the one that loves yes. me. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And died for me. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, we love you Thank this morning. You, we're so thankful, Lord God, for the word of God. We're so thankful, Lord God, for understanding who you are. And the power, God, that's in your name, God. I pray this morning that you would touch us, Lord. You would help us, Lord, to wrap our minds around what your word declares, God. Hallelujah. And allow your truth, Lord, to, to penetrate our lives, God. Hallelujah. Touch us, Lord, God. I pray, Lord, that our prayer, Lord, our understanding, Lord, of you would be more clear, God. So I can get on my knees when I ask in the name of Jesus. I know that I'm getting through. I'm getting through to the one that's able to change the situation. The one that's able to change the circumstance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, God, for your power. God, those of you have need of this morning, hallelujah. He's walking these aisles right now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know the name to call on. We know the name that changes things. We know the name that's able to save. The name that's able to heal. The one that's able to deliver, hallelujah. The one that's able to change things, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. These altars are over. Hallelujah. If you need God to change something in your life, Hallelujah. He says, ask that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. I want to ask him this morning. I want to talk to him this morning. I want to allow God to work in my life. 